Do not exclude yourself from the story I am writing in you. Do not exclude your life from this most sacred book, my word for all to read. For others are reading your story. Others, the people whom I have placed in your life, are reading the story of you and of me. I believe it is a beautiful story. Don't you? Holy Spirit in Modern Life, this is what we heard for you. My word is your treasure. It is your food. It restores you. It nourishes you. It reminds you that you are part of something so much bigger than what you can readily see. The brothers and sisters in the story, they are yours, your brothers, your sisters. They are like you, no different, not loved more, not loved less. You read about them because I want you to know them. I want you to know them because it helps you to know and learn about me. Do not exclude yourself from the story. Do not exclude your life from this most sacred book, my word for all to read. For others are reading your story. Others, the people whom I have placed in your life, are reading the story of you and of me. I believe it is a beautiful story, don't you? It is the story of a father and a daughter, of a father and a son, the story of something beautiful dreamed up, the story of trial and suffering, of hardship and death, the story of healing and hope of restoration and redemption, the story of life laid down and of life picked up, a life entrusted, a life made new again. What is the best about your story is that it is still being lived out. We write it together, you and I. I offer suggestions for adventure, and in it all, I am with you. I am with you in sadness and in uncertainty, in stress and in moments when it is clear you have no control. It is hard to be distant from your own story, to take a step back and appreciate it while you live it out too. But that is the most fun part when you walk with me then I can give you eyes to see so you feel the story from another perspective. And it is my perspective of your story, remember, that will bring color and light to darkness, song and hope to silence. Can I show you what I hear and know and see? Your story is written in my book still being written, and we can live it and read it together, step by step, day by day. You join brothers and sisters whose stories I also write, lives of trusting me, lives of freedom, lives where love leads you to experience a story with more depth than what would be written just on your own. So keep reading and keep listening, and keep trusting. And thank you for letting me share the pen. Let's write more, you and I. Abraham and Moses, David, Peter and Paul, Rahab and Ruth, Esther, Mary Magdalene and Priscilla, 
These people lived great stories, and they're captured in scripture. But what about you? And what about me? Many of us assume biblical figures like these are just special, different from us. We assume that we cannot live like them, that our stories will never be as great. That would mean, though, that God's purpose in bringing us these stories was simply to demonstrate something unattainable, a divine taunt of sorts. It would reveal a desire in Him to impress upon us how special His biblical supermen and superwomen were, so that we could gaze upon them and wonder why He created us so unsuper. Should we believe that? Or could He have, through these stories, been giving us something not out of reach, but attainable? Could it be that He wanted Abraham and Moses, Rahab and Ruth to live great stories, and that He wanted the same for an incalculable number of men and women since? And that He wants you and me to live great stories too, right now? Francis Chan, in his book Forgotten God, says that his favorite verse in all the Bible is quite possibly James 5.17, which reads, Elijah was a man with a nature like ours. His nature was like ours. He was just like us. In what we just heard from Holy Spirit, we were invited to claim the impact of our stories within the greater story God is writing. He said, quote, Do not exclude yourself from the story. Do not exclude your life from this most sacred book, my word for all to read. For others are reading your story. Others, the people whom I have placed in your life, are reading the story of you and me. I believe it is a beautiful story, don't you? What is the best about your story is that it is still being lived out. We write it together, you and I. Unquote. So friend, as the music plays, consider the story you and God are writing together. This story of a father and a daughter, of a father and a son, the story of something beautiful dreamed up, the story of trial and suffering, of hardship and death, the story of healing and hope, of restoration and redemption, this story of life laid down, and of life picked up, a life entrusted, a life made new again. And now consider who is reading your story. Who does God bring to your mind? And how is your story impacting them? This has been Rush by Justin and Jennifer Camp. Music by Big Haunt. Production by Frank Montenegro. Make sure you go to iTunes or the Apple Podcast app to subscribe to Rush so you can connect with Holy Spirit twice a week, right in the middle of your busy modern life. And while you're there, if you feel like it, go ahead and click the stars and say you like what we're doing here and leave a review. Those reviews really help when people are searching for new podcasts. And thank you for listening. We're so grateful for you.